everybody. This is Keith Burns with Green Cover, and I'm here with one of our favorite farmers, Jeff Steffen from the Crofton, Nebraska area. Uh, Jeff has been a seed grower, a customer, and a friend of, of Green Covers for many years now. And uh, I asked Jeff the other day if he would be willing to just uh, have a little chat about how he's utilizing his livestock as a big part of his operation and potentially even using them, uh, using some of his crop ground acres uh, to be harvested through the cattle and not through a combine, which is a pretty big deal right now with the current prices of commodities. So we're just going to have a quick conversation about that concept, how Jeff sees it working in his area on his ground, and also some of the interests that some of his neighbors are starting to show in a similar concept. So Jeff, uh, thanks for taking the time to join us here. Uh, it's always great to visit with you and uh, just tell us a little bit about, you know, how you're utilizing livestock in your operation and even to the fact of, of not harvesting some of your acres with a combine. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, currently, we um, most of our cattle come in the wintertime. And they're mainly grazed on um, what we'll stockpile, cover crop after our spring crop, our small grain crops. Um, and, and you'll have some quite, quite some substantial biomass out there by the time. They'll probably come in November. Uh, and they'll be there all winter. And that we've been doing that for quite a few years. Um, the last few years, we started playing around with just designating a field to graze cows in it. Um, uh, corn works really well. Um, you know, just use it. You were just using like a heritage corn or a brown midrib corn uh, where we would paddock graze cows for the whole year. Uh, on a particular field, um, and is that a, after after the corn has formed ears and made grain? Usually, we'll start right about at tassel. Okay, uh, you know it's it's like when the pastures are are really running out, and uh, and if I will also graze maybe some some spring crops, some oats and peas, uh, and we'll start before. And I think you probably need to start them before the ear is there so they get acclimated to the corn yeah um, good point and uh, uh we'll start paddock grazing them then you know most of your biomass is there at tassel uh and then as they go along we'll graze them all the way into full maturity when it's starting to dry down and by the time by the time they get to that point they get really good at going into a new paddock and taking all the corn off and at that point it doesn't affect them anymore and the calves are getting big and and even they will you know take the ears off we get some really nice looking calves that way um on corn um but recently the interest is if if i'm going to use a rotation you know if i want to rotate to corn uh would it be better if i just put in the diversity and get more legumes and get a you know get a 12-way mix in there instead because you know here's my chance to to really uh, charge up my my rotation mm -hmm. so this coming year um part of this it's an 80 we have a small herd that we can run cows on part of it is already drilled to oats and peas and that'll be you know like an early graze um and i, I should also add there's a pasture hooked on these usually for flexibility you know to run them from pasture to to the crop field um so the plan then would be we'll probably graze a little pasture and then we'll go to oats and peas. But meanwhile, there's going to be a large part of the field. We'll, we're going to drill it to just a warm season. Well, not a warm season, a mix, a 12 way. And I know I, I ran it through your calculator, um, you know, trying to pick out the best things. And I have like, you know, 12 different varieties, peas and vetch, sun hemp, cow peas. I'm, I'm going to be rotating it to corn. Okay. So I'm hoping to to really you know charge this ground up, uh, and then pearl millets, uh, some BMR, uh, short sorghums, collards, safflower, sunflower, flax, buckwheat. Sound like it'll work? <laughs> Sounds like a virtual buffet out there. To yeah. Me. So, <laughs> so that you know, if we are limited on moisture, I'm I'm gonna that's gonna be the first thing I drill in that part of the field because I want to see. If we can get the biomass 
you know, anywhere as close to like say 150 bushel corn crop, you know, cause you get that much biomass. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, the thought is, you know, will they be able to utilize a half of that total biomass dry matter? And, and that's the numbers I'm using if in it, cause if they can, um, right now pasture in our area is two two dollars thirty cents a day because you know we've been we've been plowing up all the pasture there's very little left yeah there's really high demand for it our joke now is the pasture is an exercise lot between corn stalks so <laughs> <laughs> and, and i would guess that two dollars and thirty cents doesn't buy you a lot of high quality forage because it those They've probably been abused pretty hard over the years. They're they're slick pastures that the water runs off. They're basically brome. Um, so by the end of June, I mean the quality is really hurting. Then you're then you're basically hoping to get them through um, to to where you can get them on corn stalks. That's a long All time though. Is... The end of June to corn stalks. <laughs> yeah. Um. If you can get them on a warm season crop at that point, it's, I mean, you're gaining weight on your calves. I mean, they're just, they're just doing that much better. Yeah. So that, you know, and, and plus I want to be able to get some numbers on that. Um, yeah. So, so, so you're, you're taking out of corn production, planting a very diverse cover crop mix, get as much biomass as possible, try to put the, you know, keep the cows in good condition. Uh, yeah. wait on the calves until you can go to other options later so uh yeah it'll be really interesting we can do a follow-up to this video later on in the season you know when you have some of your numbers how much biomass how many grazing days etc cetera, etc cetera. um wh one question i was going to ask have you considered kind of combining the two things you talked about uh maybe plant your corn in say 90 inch rows or something and then plant this diverse mix in between have you done some of that yeah and so i'm glad you brought that up so we have we have done um well i've done 60 inch rows with in, inner seeding i still don't get quite as much forage as i'd like you know I, but you know obviously we're harvesting harvesting the corn also uh my nephew his plan this year is to he has a very degraded field um and uh it's some school ground he's renting he wants to strip crop corn and multi-species multi -species cover crop. He's like, okay, I'll get, you know, at least corn on half of the field. The rest is going to be to a multi-species full season mix. Um, and he's going to do it the width of his sprayer. He says he doesn't, you know, he doesn't want to Mickey Mouse around too much. Um, he'll have the advantage of those edge rows on the corn. Yep. Um, it won't be near as good as when you go narrower strips and they have a lot of cows and the plan is, is to combine the corn early and uh, send them in there. Um, one thing we see when, when we graze our cover crop acres, normally we will have a corn stock field right beside it. And it's interesting to see after a few days of that really hot ration, you'll see them out in the corn stocks. <laughs> Yeah, so we like, we, like watching, out. we like watching them balance. So, I mean, their thought is here is, you know, we can put them on this ration in, in October. Um, they'll be balancing it with corn stalks. And then his plan is the following year to plant the corn where the cover crop was and reverse it. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know, that was an interesting concept to try that. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about this at a meeting and we have another young producer he wants to try it with like 30, not 30, like 15 foot strips. Okay. He's been able to show really good corn yields on 30 foot, you know, with that much edge effect and then put a cover crop in between that. Um, that is something he was going to try, you know, we're, we're starting to call it a re half regen or half sabbatical. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but you're getting advantage of the grazing. Uh, I might just for uh, just in a little strip, I might try some 90 inch um, and see how much more biomass I could get that yeah, way. It'd be very interesting, especially 
you know, most of the 60 and 90 inch research that's being done, it's, it's taking that corn to grain yield. And so then you have this, this big perceived hit on decreased corn yields, which, you know, which is legitimate. But if you're grazing the whole thing anyway, right. You know, you know, a much cheaper corn hybrid, uh, it, it, like what you were doing with your open pollinated corn and just grazing the whole field, but you're grazing the corn on the ear along with this diverse cover crop mix. That might be, a, you know, a best of both worlds scenario. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I have, and what I love about it is, is these are a lot of young producers that have been talking about doing this and have been asking me questions. Um, we have quite a few of them and it's, it's been more just the last few weeks. Um, their interest is they've been running the numbers on, we have cow, we have enough cows up here. So they're like, if we would just plant some oats and peas and graze and then, and then see what happens after that, you know, plant a mix. Uh, a lot of times, you know, if they don't have much experience with it, their thought is like, they is always like, well, what's the one thing I can plant after that, you know? The magic bullet you know they want to plant like tough grass or this and they want to hay it again and i'm like did you ever think of just throwing a whole bunch of stuff out there and and putting cows on it <laughs> well yeah at two dollars and 30 cents a day if, right. if you get biomass that i bet that cash flow is better than corn for sure you know because there's nothing nobody's getting rich growing uh, a commodity crop this year Right. And, and that's, I think that's the reason why we're seeing this late surge on, on uh, oats demand here is, is they're starting to run those numbers. It just costs so much less money to put in a small grain, you know, and go from there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, you know, and then I, I just estimated the numbers. So um, like say a hundred, say marginal soils, 150 bushel corn yields. If you just figure the half, half the dry matter, uh, it was like $550 worth of dry matter, figuring 30 pounds for a cow calf pair a day of dry matter. Um, it, it came out to like $500 worth of grazing. And, uh, you know, our, our cash rents about 280 on dry land. And that'd be quite a bit for some of this, this ground we're talking about, but I'm not, I'm to the point where I'm ready to try it on irrigated. So. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, because you can grow that so much cheaper than, you know, a full corn crop because, you know, you said the majority of the biomass is made at tassel. You know, you probably have only used 50 to 60 percent of your water and maybe 50 to 60 percent of your nutrients. So if you run short of water, run short of nutrients, yeah. you still got the biomass. Right. And and in all these discussions we're having it's it's we're not even talking about the benefit of the following year or if it's a multi-species for years um where, where that gains with the weed control and everything else so i mean that's that's the exciting thing about it is finally getting some diversity into the system um economically you know yeah no that's there's so many benefits there's there's you know it's less risk it's less inputs uh and 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 don't do it on the whole farm you know it would be silly to do that you know you probably don't have enough cattle or enough management to do it but you know the the purpose that i wanted to have this conversation is i hope we can encourage some other folks who are watching this to take a look at you know think outside the box you know too many of us are just inside that corn soybean box and when money's, you know, when the profits are good, that's a good box to be in. But, you know, when, when things right. get like they are now, you need to start poking outside those edges. So it's exciting to hear that you've got uh, some young guys in your area that are taking an interest. Uh, like I said, maybe we'll do a follow-up this winter. Would love to hear how your uh, experiments or your trials are coming out, as well as the ones that they're doing there, too, on the kind of the strip corn strip. Right. Cover. Type thing. So yeah, we would love to have you, you know, help collect some of that data, maybe even share some pictures uh, this this winter or how some of that went. We can uh, do a follow up webinar. So Jeff, thanks so much for taking the time to, to share some of this information with us. I think it's a great opportunity for people to not only really improve the health of 
one of your poor performing fields on your farm, uh, but also have the potential to turn that into some additional uh, cash flow uh, this spring. So thanks everybody for watching and we'll talk to you next time.